Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. God is good all the time and all the time. God is good. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for another beautiful day that you've given us. Thank you for being the great I am. Thank you for being the creator of all things, visible and invisible. O oh Lord, we thank you for being the Savior of our souls. You are the Holy One of Israel. The God of the whole earth shall you be called, Jesus, the Messiah. And so, Lord, here we are ready to hear a word from you. Fill us with fresh and new revelation, fresh and new vision, fresh and new anointing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Open up your word that we may behold wondrous things out of your Torah. Teach us great and mighty things that we do not know. Lord, lead your sheep. Lead everyone who you've ordained to feed at the table that you have set so that we would all grow in the knowledge of who you are as we study to show ourselves approved, rightly dividing the word of God, never being ashamed because your word is truth. Therefore, sanctify us with your truth. Open up your prophetic word to us, Lord. Here we are ready to eat. You are the bread of life. You are the water of life. And we are hungry. Yes, we are thirsty. Therefore, feed us. For we give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, we pray and ask it all, praying for the peace of Jerusalem. Amen. Well, thank you for coming back to another teaching installment of When the Temple in Heaven is Open, Everything Will Change. And... Praise God, I've been wanting to do this study for a while, ever since I saw this article that I'm going to bring up. And now I finally got around to doing it. And I want to talk about how Edom and the USA are together. <laughs> you see, the USA is an interesting, 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 interesting place. Many people struggle to find the United States of America on the pages of Bible scripture. But if you're still struggling, I pray that this teaching would open up your eyes to see that God definitely has singled out the United States of America as a major end time player. As a matter of fact, the United States of America is that nation that God has repeatedly marked out in the scriptures through different types and shadows that will usher in the seven year tribulation when she is suddenly destroyed on the day of sudden destruction. You see, the unique thing about the United States of America is its relation to Israel and its a nation filled with immigrants a nation filled with all the 70 nations of the world. All the 70 nations of the world that we get in the Tower of Babel, the Table of Nations in Genesis chapter 10, all 70 nations are represented in the United States of America. Therefore, all of these prophecies that we read in the Old Testament, many of these prophecies which talk about judgments upon certain nations, like Tyre, like Edom, like Egypt, like Babylon specifically, of course, all relate to what will happen to the United States of America at the time of sudden destruction, which immediately before that time of sudden destruction comes upon the earth, the body of Christ will be raptured out of the world. Hallelujah. The rapture is the first event that happens on the cloudy and dark day when that shofar sounds, when Michael the archangel um, ha raises his voice like a lion and uh, Jesus Christ says, come up here to the dead first. And then for those of us who are alive and remain, we're all going to assemble in the clouds to meet our Lord in the air. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. And right when that event happens, which will be in a twinkling of an eye in a moment, Sudden destruction is going to come down upon the planet like the world has never seen before. Right now we're seeing how God is showing us plumes of smoke with the burning of 
uh, the wildfires in Africa and Siberia and in uh, the Amazon. We're seeing it. We're seeing the beginning stages and we've been seeing the beginning stages of what's coming because on the cloudy and dark day, we also have to understand that the first four trumpets are blown. And one of those trumpet judgments, the Bible tells us that all green grass will be burnt up and one third of the trees will be burnt up. One third of all the trees in the world are going to be destroyed and all green grass is going to burn up because of the hailstones and coals of fire that are going to rain down upon the planet. And also because of World War Three, that's going to break out at the same time. It's the day of perplexity. It's just a terrible day that you don't want to be around for because it's like no other time in human history, as Jesus Christ tells us as the prophet. Daniel tells us that when Michael stands up a time of trouble that the world has never seen is going to come upon this planet. And nothing in human history can compare. Not even the flood of Noah could compare. And the flood of Noah destroyed everyone, everything, except those who were on the ark. But God says it's going to be worse than any other time in human history, speaking of the seven-year tribulation. Even worse than the flood that destroyed all life except for those who are on the ark and, you know, marine animals and stuff. But God says that during the seven-year tribulation, even the fish of the sea are going to die because all the oceans are going to turn to blood. Everything is going to, uh, this whole world is going to become nothing but death because that sinister minister will be on the earth. And he is nothing but death and people are going to make that covenant of death with him when he appears to bring order to all the chaos so let's get into this teaching praise god that was just a little intro edom and esau edom is esau and edom and the usa equals the trap there's coming a trap my friends a trap a trap a trap a trap a trap is coming a trap is coming and many people don't understand that people see peace and prosperity. People are crying, peace, peace. People say, make America great again. People see that there's nothing happening because they're seeing with their natural eyes. But no, a trap is coming. And God tells us in the word of God that there is a trap that is specifically laid. And this trap that's specifically laid for Edom is also mentioned in the prophecy having to do with Babylon that catches Edom and Babylon by surprise. And we're going to go over this. Okay. And that's what brings about the day of sudden destruction. That's why when you read in Revelation chapter 18, everyone who's left behind, who survived the cloudy and dark day and the destruction of Babylon the Great, they can't believe that such a great city. Babylon the Great could be destroyed in one day, one hour. They can't believe it. It was a total shock to the inhabitants of the world, everyone who's left behind. And so we're going to get into this, hallelujah, because we're going to let God be true and every, uh, every man a liar. And so uh, I want to go over this breaking Israel news article that was from a couple weeks ago, August 5th, 2019. And uh, I want to go over what uh, the, uh, a couple of Jewish people are saying, rabbis are saying about President Trump and his connection to Edom, okay? <laughs> this, this is real, this is real interesting. Uh, and before I go there, I just want to show you that I'm going I'm to put these two links in the description box because I, uh, by the power of the Holy Spirit, he led me to make uh, two videos last year, July 18th, 2018, and on July 20th, 2018. He, he, he led me to make these two videos which show how Edom is a is a picture of the USA is a type of the USA, and uh, I'm a, I'm gonna put the links um, in the description box in case you haven't read uh, in case you haven't seen these videos that I did last year about US about the USA and Edom, okay? And now it's all coming together even more, okay? Because God is the one who's orchestrating all these events. God is the one who is orchestrating all these events because God is the sovereign. He's bringing about his desired end. 
Hallelujah. Because every word of prophecy will be fulfilled to the letter. Hallelujah. We just got to get on board with him so we, we can have the right understanding through the power of the Holy Spirit. And the power of the Holy Spirit, that spirit of the Lord. Hallelujah. That spirit of wisdom, that spirit of counsel, that spirit of might, that spirit of understanding, that spirit of knowledge, that spirit of the fear of the Lord, the fullness, the seven spirits of God, the fullness of the Ruach HaKodesh, the fullness of the Holy Spirit, I pray that it would fill us. Hallelujah. All of us who have been named children of God by faith in Jesus Christ, I pray that the Holy Spirit with his fullness will fill us. Hallelujah. And through the fullness of the seven spirits of God, through the fullness of the Holy Spirit, that that Holy Spirit, God in us, because the Holy Spirit is God, I pray that his fullness will teach us, will open up our spiritual eyes in order to see as God sees in order to think as God thinks, in order to hear as God hears. He's given us uh, the ear, the tongue of the learned, hallelujah. He's opened up our ear to understanding. He's given us the Holy Spirit so that we could get on the same wavelength, hallelujah, so that we can speak the same language, so that we can hear the same things. He's given us an opportunity through entering through the new covenant through faith in Jesus Christ to understand, to comprehend, to know the deep things of God. Hallelujah. And so here we go. Let's go through this article. Uh, I want to I want to hit a couple high points. This is from Breaking Israel News by uh, Brother Adam. Uh, Trump could initiate building of third temple as head of Edom. Jewish sources hint that the alliance between the U.S. and Israel is the prophetic end of days coming together of Esau and Jacob as a prelude to the building of the third temple. Some experts believe that President Trump fulfills many of the requirements for the leader of Edom that will make this happen. So let me jump down here so we can uh, read this bottom article. Uh, another rabbi who believes that the U.S. president will play a major role in the construction of the third temple is Rabbi Yosef Berger, the rabbi of King David's tomb on Mount Zion. Rabbi Berger emphasized that it is essential that President Trump, as a Christian, take a role in the building of the third temple. Rabbi Berger quoted Rabbi Bahaya ben Asher ibn Halawa, a 13th century Spanish biblical commentator, also known as Rabbi Enu Bei, the medieval scholar wrote that the first and second temples were built by the descendants of King David. But in the future, the third temple will be built by descendants of Edom. Rabbi Berger emphasized that these sources state explicitly that the third temple will be built by the descendants of Rome, i.e. Christianity. Rabbi Enu Bayehu explain this is Tukan, reparation. Rabbi Berger said, Rome destroyed the second temple, so Rome's descendants, the Christians, are going to amend this by taking part in the bringing of the third temple. Like Cyrus, Trump's connection to the Messiah is that he will play a role in one of the major functions of the Messiah. He will pave the way for the building of the third temple. Trump will not personally merit building the temple, he continued. Like Cyrus, he will pave the way for men who will begin the construction. And when the time is right, the third temple will descend from heaven. No leader in history has recognized Jerusalem as the capital of the Jews in Israel, he pointed out. He has already created a great tekun, a reparation, for the Christians through his unprecedented relationship with Jerusalem. Trump is the representative of Edom that will perform the final historic reparation for his entire nation by building the temple. Okay, so we know the truth about that the third temple is going to be built uh, when the Antichrist is revealed after the rapture, after the cloudy day, when the seven-year tribulation begins and the Antichrist comes on the scene, he's revealed, and he makes that covenant with many. 
And so we see that President Trump right now, he's paving the way, as this article says, President Trump is paving the way for this to happen by everything that he's doing. He's paving the way as a forerunner for what is coming. It's, and it goes in line with what Revelation chapter 17 tells us about that seventh king, that seventh king who only continues for a little while. And then once that seventh king is out of the way, that seventh king is destroyed when Babylon the Great is destroyed. The eighth king appears, and that eighth king, who is of the seven, he takes over with the ten kings. That eighth king is, of course, the Antichrist, the little horn. And so we see how President Trump is fulfilling his role as that seventh king, paving the way, doing all these things, getting everything ready for what's coming, because the day of sudden destruction is at hand. And I want to point out how these Jewish people are pointing out the connection to Edom. And that's the point. You see, the connection to Edom is the key. The connection to Edom with President Trump is the key because we're going to go over the prophecy that God has about Edom. Oh, because it's deep. Hallelujah. <laughs> the prophecy that God has against Edom is deep. Hallelujah. And so before we go to the prophecies that God has against Edom, let's go to what God said um, through um, Jacob. I'm mean, not through Jacob, through Isaac when he blessed um, Esau. Because remember, Esau is the twin brother of Jacob. Remember uh, the story how um, Jacob stole uh, the birthright from Esau. And so because Jacob stole the birthright from Esau, because Esau despised his birthright, he gave it up for a bowl of soup. He was a man of the flesh. Um, Jacob inherited uh, the birthright of the firstborn. And so Jacob got the firstborn blessing. And so after Jacob receives the firstborn blessing from his father Isaac, Isaac then speaks to Esau. And Isaac tells Esau what his destiny will be. We see this in Genesis chapter 27. Uh, Genesis chapter 27, verse 39. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, your dwelling... Well, let me go back to 38 so you can see this. And Esau said unto his father, Have you but one blessing, my father? Bless me, even me also, O my father. And Esau lifted up his voice and wept. Esau was weeping for that one blessing because he had, he had traded away. He had sold his birthright because he despised it. He sold his birthright to his twin brother Jacob for a bowl of soup. A man of the flesh. An absolute man of the flesh is Esau. He had, he had no regard for spiritual things until it was too late. When it was time to get the blessing, the blessing for the firstborn was traded away for a bowl of soup. And now here is Esau regretting his decision. And now he's seeking for one blessing. And so the one blessing that his father Isaac tells him is this. Verse 39, Genesis chapter 27. And Isaac, his father, answered and said unto him, Behold, your dwelling shall be the fatness of the earth and of the dew of heaven from above. Here's the key, verse 40. And by your sword you shall live and shall serve your brother. And it shall come to pass when you shall have the dominion that you shall break his yoke from off your neck. Oh, is this not exactly what we see happening in our day today? These Jews, these rabbis, these learned men, dating all the way back to the 13th century, a rabbi had a prophecy that the third temple is going to be built by a descendant of Edom. And here we are, flash forward in 2019, and these other rabbis in Israel are saying that Trump, President Trump, is... Um, fulfilling all the requirements for the leader of Edom that will bring the third temple building into fruition. And so we see that 
these learned men who don't have the Holy Spirit uh, because, uh, you know, they're not born again by faith in Jesus Christ, even they can see from um, what they know in their scriptures uh, that President Trump is fulfilling the requirements for this leader from Edom. And this leader from Edom is being spoken by these Jewish men and we can see that the prophecy that Isaac gave to Edom, to Esau, who's Edom, is exactly what we see in our world today. If the United States of America is a type, is a type of Edom. Because the prophecy says about Edom that Edom, Edom would live by the sword. Is that not exactly what the United States of America does? They live by the sword. How many wars has America fought? If somebody doesn't agree with America's policies, they bomb them, you know, set up uh, covert operations to overthrow governments. You know the rabbit hole. Okay, I'm not going to go down there today. But you know what's going on. You know how America operates. This isn't like <laughs> this isn't like conspiracy theory mumbo jumbo. This is facts. You know and I know how America operates. America operates by the sword. America operates by the sword. Is not this exactly what God spoke through Isaac when he gave the prophecy to Esau, because Esau's Edom, he said that Esau, who was Edom, would live by the sword. That's what America does. You got these rabbis in Israel saying that Trump is the king of Edom. <laughs> He's the king of Edom. Look at what's going on in the world. Look at what people are saying. Okay, the prophecy is coming to life. But wait until we get to the prophecy that God has about Edom. It's going to blow your mind, okay? Because there's a trap coming. <laughs> oh, there's a treacherous dealer. Oh, it, it, oh, it's just so much. It's just so much. We're going to do a little Bible study today. Come on, buckle up your seatbelts. Open up your Bible and dig in. Hallelujah. Put a napkin to your neck and dig in. Because we're going to do a little Bible study. Hallelujah. Because it's the word of God, hallelujah. That's the only truth in this world. What did Jesus Christ do? Oh, I'm going down a little rabbit trail, but this is a good rabbit trail. What did Jesus Christ do, hallelujah? What did Jesus Christ do when the devil came to him in the wilderness? When the spirit drove King Jesus into the wilderness for 40 days and 40 nights, the Bible says afterwards he was hungry. And here comes old Slewfoot, that old serpent. <laughs> oh, but he was no match for the king. <laughs> he was no match for the creator. Hallelujah. <laughs> you see, old Slewfoot tried to slither his way and tempt God. Can you imagine the audacity? <laughs> you talk about someone who ain't playing with a full deck. You talk about someone who ain't got all the marbles in their head. Can you imagine the audacity of the serpent? He tried to tempt the Lord. You see, but <laughs> the Lord Jesus Christ, he's already an infinite amount of steps ahead of the dragon. He hit him upside with the word of God three times and knocked him out. Hallelujah. <laughs> he knocked him out. Bow. Get out of here. <laughs> it is written. Hallelujah. You see, it's the word of God we have to live by. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word. That proceeds out of the mouth of God. That's what the Bible says. We got to do a little Bible study today because we're going to we're going to learn some things about what God is about to do in these end times. And so here, let's get back to Genesis chapter 27, verse 20, uh, verse 40. So God says to Esau and Esau's Edom, 
He says that by your sword you shall live and you shall serve your brother. Is that not what the United States of America does with Israel? Is it not? If America is a type of Edom, is a fulfillment of Edom, modern day Edom in our day at the end of days, is not this literally a fulfillment of the United States of America. The United States of America, if it's a type of Edom, which it is, we live by the sword and we serve Israel. We serve Israel. The, the, I mean, these things aren't even debatable. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you, there, there's, you can't, you can't like even debate it. Really, you, there, there's nothing that you can say that can be debated against the reality of what we're living out right now at this moment in time. America lives by the sword. It has been ever since it has been founded. That's not debatable. And then America serves Israel. <laughs> America is Israel's only friend, pretty much. That's why Israel has not been utterly obliterated. Because America, the brother, <laughs> America serves Israel. If America did not protect Israel right now and has been for the last 71 years, Israel, well, you know, I'm not going to say that because God would intervene. And he would have wrote about it in his in the Bible. But just to go to say, Israel would have been attacked so many more times, full front. You know, they would have all these nations would have came against Israel a long time ago, but they haven't yet. Because of America. But there's coming a day. <laughs> oh, there's coming a day. Real, real, real soon. As we're gonna read here. And we're gonna see in the in the other prophecies that there's going to come a treacherous deal. Oh, look at Jared Kushner. Oh, it's a treacherous deal. <laughs> it's a treacherous deal, you see. And he says it right here, because God tells us the end from the beginning. <laughs> he already knows what's going to happen before he even created anything that he made. Oh, he's the infinite almighty God from everlasting to everlasting. He's God. Who can search out the number of his days? Who can count them? <laughs> No one. He lives forever. Glory to his name. You see, but look at what he says right here. Look at what he says. He calls it. He calls it before it even happens. Hallelujah. He's God. Look at what he says. Genesis chapter 27, verse 40. And by your sword you shall live and shall serve your brother, and it shall come to pass. Okay. In the future, there's going to come something to pass. When you shall have the dominion. Who has the dominion? Edom is prophesied to have the dominion, okay? Edom is prophesied to have the dominion. Right now, who has the dominion over the whole world? The United States of America. <laughs> you can't argue with these things. Let God be true. Hallelujah. And every man a liar. Oh, but looks what, look what happens when Edom has the dominion. And it shall come to pass when you shall have the dominion that you shall break his yoke from off your neck. <laughs> Does not God tell it like it is? <laughs> oh, he calls it out. It's the treacherous dealer. <laughs> it's that peace deal, my friends. Oh, my goodness. Can we wake up and smell the coffee? Can we wake up and smell the roses? Can we wake up and see what God is doing at this last moment in human history? It's all coming to pass before our face. There's a treacherous deal in the works. And this treacherous deal that is in the works is when Edom, who has the dominion at this moment, who lives by the sword, who serves Jacob at the moment. There's going to come a time that God says he's going to, Edom is going to break the yoke from off his neck, meaning that he's no longer going to bless Israel. He's no longer going to serve Israel. He's no longer going to be on Israel's side. 
And God says way back even before this in Genesis chapter 12, when he spoke to Abraham, the father of the Hebrews, the father of faith, he said, I will bless those who bless you and I will curse those who curse you. God can't lie. He will not lie. It's impossible for him to lie. Oh, but there's a treacherous deal coming. There's a treacherous deal coming. Okay, so you see these, these facts. These are facts. You can look these up, study this for yourself, because we got people in Israel who are declaring that President Trump is meeting all the requirements for the leader that will come from Edom, the leader of Edom who will usher in the building of the third temple. These people in Israel are saying that President Trump is that leader. So if President Trump is the leader of Edom, and he is because Edom is a type of America, as we've already discussed, we have to understand what God says in the judgments against Edom that will come at the end of days. Look at, look at, look at, look at what the Bible says. Okay, there's a whole book, a whole book called Obadiah, which talks about the destruction of Edom. I'm not going to go through everything because it's a, it's a lot. But many of these things that are written in Obadiah, there's only one chapter, are also repeated in Jeremiah chapter 49. Jeremiah chapter 49, when it talks about the judgment of the nations, which all coincide with the day of the Lord, there's a whole section, the judgment of Edom. Jeremiah chapter 49, starting at verse 7, all the way to verse 22. A lot of these things are repeated from Obadiah, and I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go uh, hit some high points, but I want you to see the correlation because this all ties in to the treacherous deal. This all ties into the trap, and this all ties in to the destruction of Babylon the Great, because America is a fulfillment of all these judgments. It's a type of Egypt. It's a type of Tyre. It's a type of Edom. It's a type of Babylon. It's a type of all these different world kingdoms that have uh, find their ultimate fulfillment and the fulfillment of their ultimate destruction when that mystery, oh, look at what God says in the book of Revelation. He says it's a mystery. <laughs> it's a mystery, my friends. It's a mystery. Look at this. Look at this. Oh, I'm just all over the place, but it's just so much. I can't say everything I want to say because there's just so, so much to paint this picture. But look at here in Revelation chapter 17, it's a mystery that Babylon the Great is. Uh, Revelation chapter 17, verse 5, when John sees Babylon the Great, look at, look at what he sees. He sees upon her forehead. There was a name written, mystery, Babylon the Great, the mother of of harlots and abominations of the earth. Oh, it's a mystery because there's so many fulfillments of all these ancient kingdoms that are going to be fulfilled when the judgments are poured out on the day of sudden destruction when Babylon the Great is totally destroyed. It will fulfill many of these prophecies. Let's look at Obadiah. Oh, help, help, help us, Holy Spirit. Help us, Holy Spirit. The destruction of Edom, okay, because uh, there's going to come a time, as we read in Genesis, where, Genesis 27, where Edom is going to get tired of serving his brother. Edom's going to get tired of serving Jacob, and when Edom has the dominion, when Edom is ruling, the Bible tells us that Edom is going to break the yoke that he has around his neck from serving his brother. And when that day comes, that's the day of sudden destruction. And look what God says. He calls it out here in Obadiah chapter 1. Verse 1, the vision of Obadiah. Thus saith the Lord God concerning Edom. We have heard a rumor from the Lord, and an ambassador is sent among the heathen. Arise ye, and let us rise up against her in battle. Oh, you see, there's an ambassador that's going around right now. Oh, there's an ambassador that's going around among the heathen that is getting everyone prepared for that soon coming day, for that soon coming day of sudden destruction that's going to catch Edom by surprise. 
which is the United States of America. Verse 2, behold, I have made you small among the heathen. You are greatly despised. Look at this, verse 3, the pride of your heart has deceived you. You that dwellest in the clefts of the rock, whose habitation is high, that saith in his heart, who shall bring me down to the ground? <laughs> you talk about America to the T. Who's going to destroy America? Who can destroy America? Let's make America great again. Who would ever come against America? Right? Mm -hmm. God says it's pride that has deceived America's heart. No one can come against America. We're going to make America great again. We're the greatest nation that's ever been on this planet. Verse 4. Though you exalt yourself as the eagle. Oh, he's calling it out like he, oh, look at God. What's the, what's the national uh, animal uh, for uh, symbol for America? Is it not the bald eagle? Though you exalt yourself as the eagle. And though you set your nest among the stars. Who, who wants to have a space force? Who wants to ascend up into heaven and fortify the might of her strength? I mean, the, I, <laughs> it's funny to me because people still argue these things and I don't get how you could argue these things. It's like so in your face that it's like, how can you not still see that this is America? Who is the only nation that's setting itself up in the heavens? President Trump said he wants to make a space force and he doesn't want to. It's already in the works. America is the one who has set its nest in the stars, just like God said thousands of years ago. But look what God says. Oh, though you set your nest among the stars, there will I bring you down, saith the Lord. See, there's going to be nothing that's going to stop what's coming. Nothing can avert what's coming. God has given America warning after warning. You know what's happened every time this peace deal, this treacherous deal has been in the works. Major calamities, major destructions have come to America. And even before this peace deal was in the works, you go back through American history. Every time America did something to Israel, God sent catastrophic judgment upon the nation of America. When this peace deal is released and it seeks to legitimize the Palestinian people on land that God has given to the descendants of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob forever, you've divided the land of Israel and now you have brought upon yourself a curse. That curse is to be divided just as you have done to Israel. Oh, it's the cloudy day. Look at what God says in verse 5. If thieves came to you, if robbers by night, how are you cut off? Would they not have stolen till they had enough? If the grape gatherers came to you, would they not leave some grapes? Verse 6. How are the things of Esau searched out? How are his hidden things sought up? This is the key. Look at verse 7. Look at this. Look at this. Verse 7. Look at this. All the men of your confederacy have brought you even to the border. The men that were at peace with you have deceived you and prevailed against you. They that eat your bread have laid a wound under you. There is none understanding in him. Oh, it's a trap, my friends. This is the King James Version. I'm going to read a different version of verse 7. Obadiah verse 7. Look at this. Look at how the NLT words it. Look at this trap that God has set. All your allies will turn against you. They will help to chase you from your land. They will promise you peace while plotting to deceive and destroy you. Your trusted friends will set traps for you and you won't even 
know about it. <laughs> let's make America great again. Let's let's be the bully on the block. Look at this. Look at look what had just happened. Uh, this just happened. The G7 meeting. Here goes President Trump. This was just over the weekend. Oh, uh, you know you don't want to you don't want to uh, make President Trump mad. Oh, but it's a treacherous. It, 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 there's treachery all around. And God says that Edom is going to be deceived. And Edom is a type of America. And America is being led into a trap. And God says that this trap is laid by people who were at peace. So that America thought that they were at peace. But we see what President Trump just did last week when he talked about, I'm the chosen one. Looking up into heaven when he said, I'm going against China. I've been chosen to come against China. I'm coming against the EU. He, he, he had that remark uh, against Denmark talking about, you know, he, he's going to buy Greenland. Uh, but I mean, the, that was just last week. But there's been so many things that President Trump has done to come against people who were at peace. So America thought. God has said that the allies that America thought that she had are going to turn against her. And President Trump is doing his best to turn the whole world against America. Okay, I'm not even talking about Russia and China, the big, the big dogs. <laughs> those, are the, those are the heavy hitters. <laughs> those are the big dogs. The big dogs. Oh, my goodness. Russia and China, those are the big dogs. <laughs> China, uh, they're there at the end, the kings from the east. <laughs> oh, and look at what President Trump is doing. He's, he, he has that trade war with China. He said, I'm coming against China. <laughs> this is what he said out of his own mouth. I'm the chosen one. And then he said, I'm coming against the EU. You know, he, he always rails against NATO. These are things that you can research on your own. Okay, and... He says that these nations in NATO, they don't put up their fair share. And he talks about this and that, about how he's going to pull out of NATO. He's always making all these threats with allies. But God says when Edom is destroyed, there's going to be a trap that is going to be set by those who America, which is Edom, thought was at peace. God says the same thing about Babylon. This is the tie-in. God says that when Babylon is destroyed. Babylon is also caught in a trap. Jeremiah chapter 50, verse 23. How is the hammer of the whole earth cut asunder and broken? How is Babylon become a desolation among the nations? Okay, there's only one hammer of the whole earth. There's only one who lives by the sword. We already saw the prophecy that God gave through Isaac to tell to Esau. You're going to live by the sword. There's only one nation today that fulfills that, who lives by the sword, who's the hammer of the whole earth. It's the United States of America. You can't argue that. God says that in verse 24, there's going to come something that comes against the hammer of the whole earth, which shatters it. Verse 24, Jeremiah chapter 50, talking about the destruction of Babylon. Look at what he says. I have laid a trap for you, and you are also taken, O Babylon, and you were not aware. You are found and also caught because you have striven against the Lord. Same thing. God says that he sets a trap for Edom. And he even tells us that it's allies who are plotting against Edom. People who were the trusted friends of Edom have deceived Edom. And through that deception, a trap was set. But Edom didn't even know it. The same thing happens with the prophecy with Babylon. God said he lays the trap. And when God lays the trap, he says he does it because Babylon has fought against the Lord. Babylon has striven against the Lord. That striving is the treacherous deal, that peace deal. 
That's what it's all about. That's how the judgment comes in the end times when the people of the world divide the land of Israel and the one who is in charge of doing that at this very moment in human history is the United States of America, Jared Kushner, Jason Greenblatt, approved by President Trump, is working to divide the land of Israel. No ands, ifs, or buts about it. You cannot divide the land. That's the treacherous deal, which brings about the trap, which leads to the day of the Lord, which leads to the day of of sudden destruction you see a couple things and then i'm gonna end it up i got 15 minutes help us holy ghost jeremiah chapter 49 remember i said this is also a, a talking about the judgment on edom look at when the judgment comes upon edom look at what god says is going to happen to edom look at the total devastation that comes to edom verse 17 jeremiah chapter 49 also edom shall be a desolation Everyone that goes by it shall be astonished and shall hiss at all the plague thereof. As in the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighbor cities thereof, saith the Lord, no man shall abide there, neither shall a son of man dwell in it. It's total destruction. It's total annihilation. It's total annihilation when the judgment is poured out. He says it's going to be just like Sodom and Gomorrah. That's the same language that he used when describing the destruction of uh, Babylon. Uh, God says that when he destroys Babylon, he's going to um, destroy it um, just like he destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah. It's the same language, okay? It's the same language. When um, uh, when God destroys Babylon, he also makes it as Sodom and Gomorrah. So this is giving us a tie-in. We're talking about the same place because the United States of America fulfills the prophecy that God has against Babylon. The United States of America fulfills the prophecy that we're reading about in regards to Edom. The United States of America fulfills the prophecy that God has declared against Tyre, uh, the United States of America fulfills the prophecy that God has in regards to Egypt, and on and on and on and on it goes because America is a land of immigrants. All 70 nations are represented in America, and America is spoken repeatedly in the scriptures because all of these judgments comes when the day of the Lord begins. Now let me go back here to Jeremiah chapter 50. Jeremiah chapter 50, again, this is all about the destruction of Babylon. Babylon is going to be destroyed. Here he goes talking about um, the overthrow of Sodom and Gomorrah. Verse 39, verse 40. As God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah and the neighbor cities thereof, saith the Lord, so shall no man abide there, neither shall any son of man dwell therein. Now, you do your own study. I'm not going to go through this. You type in Sodom and Gomorrah. Type in Sodom and Gomorrah and do your own study and see every time Sodom and Gomorrah is mentioned. And look at the shadows. It's always connected to Babylon. Edom, a type of Babylon. America, Babylon. It's all pointing to Babylon. And Babylon, the great, which is the United States of America, is going to be totally destroyed, totally wiped off the map. No one is going to live in her ever again. You go to Israel, you go to the Dead Sea, you look around there and where Sodom and Gomorrah used to be, there's nothing there. There's nothing there. You go there to this day, there's nothing there. That's what God is going to do to America. It's that serious. We're talking about the end of the age. We're talking about the end of this sinful kingdom. 
that is ruled by Hasatan. It's coming to an absolute end. And God is going to obliterate the United States of America when the day of the Lord begins. No ands, ifs, or buts about it. To whom much has been given, shall much be required. God ain't playing on the cloudy day. He is not playing on the cloudy day. Do you understand how serious the cloudy day is? Do you realize how serious the cloudy and dark day is? Do you understand how catastrophic the cloudy and dark day is? It's terrible, my friends. It's terrible. If you survive it, all you're going to do is howl. All you're going to do is wail and weep. You take a bottle of Hennessy if you can find it and drink it. It's going to taste bitter. The Bible says even strong drink will be bitter unto those who drink it. There's no joy. There's no joy in the day of the Lord if you're left behind. There's no joy in the day of the Lord if you're left behind. There's no uh, making melodies and sweet songs in the day of the Lord. No, there's a garden of sackcloth and baldness upon every head. All sweet songs are turned into lamentation, mourning and woe. Alas, alas. It's a terrible day. It's a terrible day. It's a terrible day. It's not pretty, my friends. You do not want to be left behind for the cloudy and dark day. You got to get out of here. You got to get out of here at the time when Jesus Christ comes on the clouds. You got to get out of here. You got to get to the Father's house. You got to escape by the blood of Jesus. You got to get out of here by the blood of Jesus. You can't be left behind. You can't be left behind. You can't be left behind. Do you understand what's coming? Do you understand what's coming? You cannot be left behind for the cloudy and dark day. You cannot be left behind for the cloudy and dark day. It's terrible, my friends. It's absolute terror in that day. Let God tell you that. Let God tell you the terror. Let God tell you the terror. Let God tell you the terror. Of the cloudy day. Look at this. Look at this. Look at, look at how the cloudy day comes. God spells it out. Isaiah chapter 24. From the uttermost parts of the earth have we heard songs. Even glory to the righteous. But I said, my leanness, my leanness. Woe unto me. The treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. Yea, the treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously. It's the breaking of the everlasting covenant, dividing up the land. That's the treacherous deal. That's when America turns its back on Israel. That's when God says enough, enough. The cup is already run over. America has to pay. All of the wickedness that America has polluted the world with is gonna be brought into judgment. Quick, fast, and in a hurry. The treacherous deal is the final nail in the coffin. You release the peace plan to divide the land of Israel. That's it. The curse comes. It's over. Look at what happens when the treacherous dealer deals treacherously. When Edom... When Esau, when the king of Edom breaks the yoke from off his neck, when he no longer wants to serve his brother at the time when Edom has dominion. The treacherous dealer deals treacherously. The peace plan. Look what comes. Verse 17. Fear and the pit 
and the snare are upon you, O inhabitant of the earth. And it shall come to pass that those who flee from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. And he that comes up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare. For the windows from on high are open, and the foundations of the earth do shake. You talk about destruction. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage. And the transgression thereof shall be heavy upon it. And it shall fall and not rise again. That's what's coming, my friends. And it all begins with the treacherous deal. When that treacherous dealer deals treacherously, the fear, the pit, and the snare comes upon the planet. Because the windows from on high are going to be open. Oh, there's a war in heaven. <laughs> and the foundations of the earth are going to shake. Oh, it's the greatest earthquake in human history. Gog and Magog. It's the cloudy day. Everything's going to shake, my friends, if you're left behind. But it's only just beginning. You can't be left behind for this day. You can't be left behind for this day. I pray that no one who's listening to this message, as long as you're listening to this message before the time of the rapture, I pray that you have given your life to Jesus Christ. If you haven't, Give him your life right now so you can escape. You don't want to be left behind for this day. You do not want to be left behind when the fear and the pit and the snare are upon you. Oh, inhabitant of the earth. You don't even know what God is talking about here. The fear and the pit and the snare. Where are you going to run? Where will you hide? There's nowhere to hide. There's nowhere to run. The foundations are shaking. Even if you try to mount up into heaven, the heavens are shaking. Because the windows from on high are open. Oh, it's the cloudy day. Yep, there's only one way of escape, my friends. There's only one way of escape. There's only one way of escape, and that is through Jesus Christ, our Lord. He's the only way. You got to get out of here at the time of the rapture. You don't want to be left behind for what's coming. It's all about to happen. You know what's coming. You see it with your own eyes. You can see. You know what's about to happen. But remember, oh, remember, remember. This day that we've been talking about, God has already told us that this day comes upon most of the world like a thief in the night. <laughs> oh, the day of the Lord will come like a thief in the night, meaning that not many people will be ready when he comes on the cloud. Only those who are born again are going to be ready. That's it. That's all. Everyone else, billions and billions and billions of people will not be ready. Only those who have been born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, oil in their lamp, the wedding garment sword, are going to be ready to be called up. It's not many people. Not many. It's not many people. That's it. That's all. I pray that you're one of the remnant. I pray that you're part of the body of Christ because he's coming. The question is, do you know? If you don't, confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord. Believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead and you shall be saved. That's it. That's all. Do it today. Today, if you will hear his voice. Today, if you will harden not your heart. Today, if you will cry out to the son of David. Son of David, have mercy on me. 
He'll give you mercy. He'll give you grace. But the question is, do you want to go to heaven? Maranatha. Amen.